Hi folks, this is Nat, and this is going to be a challenge video lesson on the concept of combining like terms. If you're watching this, it means that you're looking for kind of a little bit of extra information on some math concepts we've been covering, and what we've been doing lately in class is a lot of pre-algebra type stuff. We've probably already talked about variables and things like that, and I'm going to assume for the purpose of this lesson that you have at least a uh, moderate understanding of how adding and subtracting with negative and positive integers works. If you don't, we might need to back up a little bit and talk about that, but you can let me know if that's something that's giving you trouble. So for this lesson, let's start off with the idea of what is a like term. Well, in math, a like term is something that, in one way or another, is using the same unit. As a quick example, let's think about this. If I have three cats and four dogs, I can't put those things together and say, well, now I have seven cats or seven dogs. I might classify them more generally, but I can't just add cats and dogs together and have them be somehow the same thing. Um, on the other hand, if I say I have three dogs and four dogs, I can put those together no problem and say, well, I have seven dogs. So those are like terms because they are measured in the same unit. Generally, though, when we talk about like terms in the mathematical sense, um, we're talking about something that's probably part of a mathematical expression. And here's a mathematical expression that's going to help us kind of illustrate this. There are two types of things in here. The first you've seen before, and if you remember it or not, the three and the two are this. They are both what we call constants. Um, constants are just numbers that are not attached to anything else. They are not changing. We know what they are. Um, that's kind of generally how we define them. The other thing we have here, the 6n and the 8n, are what we actually call coefficients. They're a combination of a variable, in this case n, and a number that are being multiplied together. And that's generally what a coefficient looks like. So if you see a 6n or an 8n, that's really 6 times n and 8 times n. And those are different terms than constants. Now in math, what we like to do is make things simpler when we can, and one of the ways we can do that is by combining like terms. And constants are like terms with other constants, and coefficients can be like terms with other coefficients. So if I want to simplify or combine all like terms that are possible, what I can do is combine, in this case, my constants with my constants and my coefficients with my coefficients. The constants are pretty easy. If I look at the 3 and the 2, they're both positive, so I can just add those two together, and I can say that 3 and 2 make a total of positive 5. And if I look at my 6n and 8n, again, they're both positive, which is helpful. And I can again combine those together. So if I have 6n's and I add 8n's to them, I now have 14n's. And when we combine like terms for coefficients, the variable never changes, only the number in front of the variable. So the simplest form of this would be 14n plus 5. And if you think back to our kind of dogs example, it sort of makes sense. Uh, ends are kind of like dogs. If I have six dogs and I add eight dogs, I don't end up with uh, 14 double dogs. I just have 14 regular dogs. Um, the other thing we'll mention is something that I'm not doing. I'm not combining my constants and my coefficients. Those are not like terms. Three is not three, if we stick with our dogs idea, three dogs. It's three something else and two something else's. Um, we can't combine things that are not already in a common form or have a common unit. So in this case, the simplest things can possibly be is 14n plus 5. Here's another example. And in this case, there are no constants. There's all coefficients. Um, but again, we need to start by thinking about what's a like term and what's not. Um, we saw that constants and coefficients could not be like terms together. Um, and here we're going to find out that 
coefficients with different variables cannot be like terms together. So we have this 18f, but then we have a 6k. Okay, those aren't like terms. But 6k is a like term with 5k, and 18f is a like term with minus 3f, or negative 3f. We'll get more into the negative positive thing in a second, but let's focus on just the like terms here. As I can see, there's two sorts of like terms, so I can combine the ones that are like with each other together. So let's start with the k's. If I combine 6k and 5k, I'm going to end up with 11k's. 6k's plus 5k's is 11k's. And if I combine 18f's with negative 3f's, or maybe think of it as 18f's minus 3f's, I'm going to end up with 15f's remaining. And those will be positive because I didn't take away more f's than I had. So 11k plus 15f would be the simplest form of this expression. Here's another example of how things that may look similar to start with may actually not be like terms together. Here I've got 12x squared plus 6x plus 3x squared minus 10x. One thing to know is that any variable, even if it's the same as another variable, isn't a like term if it has a different exponential value. So when we look at 12x squared, that's going to be a like term with 3x squared, but not with 6x and not with negative 10x. So I can combine the ones that are like terms, but I can't combine an x squared with an x. So if I simplify this one, 12x squared and 3x squared is going to be 15x squared, and 6x and negative 10x is going to be negative 4x's if I put them together, because 6 minus 10 is negative 4, so minus 4x's. Now let's take a second to quickly address the idea of positives and negatives. Um, you may have noticed the way that I was dealing with some negative numbers a second ago, but we're going to kind of talk through it. When combining like terms, I always recommend to students um, that they essentially ignore any pluses or positive signs. They, they really don't matter. So when I look over here at this plus 4, I actually don't care about the plus. I'm going to ignore it altogether, and when I think about what the like term is, it's just going to be 4. On the other hand, when you think about minuses and negatives, those are really, really important. So when I look at this minus 8x, that minus needs to be part of the term, and I'm actually going to stop thinking of it as a minus and start thinking of it as a negative 8x. Same thing over here with this negative 10, or sorry, minus 10x. I'm going to treat that as though it is a minus 10x or a negative 10x. The, uh, the plus signs don't matter, the negative signs really do. So here I've got a 3. Again, it's positive, so it doesn't matter. 4 is positive, and I've got negative 8 and negative 10 with the x's. So when I start combining these together, I'm always going to treat this as addition, no matter what it was before. Ignore the fact that it used to be subtraction if there was a minus sign in front of it. Just treat it as a negative. So 3 and 4 together make 7, because 3 plus 4 is 7. And negative 8 and negative 10, if I add those together, that's going to be a bigger negative. Negative 8 plus negative 10 is going to be negative 18. And I'll just go ahead and write negative 18 x's, because it was an x to begin with. It was a coefficient. And again, I just kind of ignore anything else. Now that minus sign in there just becomes, or sorry, that negative sign in there just becomes a minus when I put it in there. 7 minus 18x. And you could have written this either way. I could have just as easily written negative 18x and then the 7. Now if the 7 is positive, I just don't want to just leave a blank in there, so I can put the plus for positive, and it becomes negative 18x plus 7. These two things are going to be interchangeable with one another. Both of them would be correct simplifications. Let's do one more example to wrap it up. Here's a nice long one that's going to give us a chance to practice lots of things. First thing to do is to identify the like terms. In a long thing like this, and even in a short thing, a nice way to do this is to draw circles or squares or triangles around things that are the same. 
So if I see negative 3x over here at the beginning, I'm going to be looking to see are there other x, val uh, x coefficients, and the answer is yes. Over here, we've got 8x. Okay, so I'm going to just box those off. Those are one set of like terms, and if I saw any other x's, I'd box those off too. Next, I'm going to look at the 2. The 2 is a constant, and I can ask myself, do I see any other constants? I see negative 9x squared, 4y, negative 3y, no other constants. So 2 is just by itself. It has no like terms. Then I can look at the minus 9x squared. Do I see any other x squareds? I do not, so that is not going to be something I can combine. And finally, I'm going to look at the 4y. The 4y has a like term. So let's see, 4y is a like term with negative 3y over here. The last thing I am going to do is just put those together. So we can start at the front, negative 3x's and 8x's. If I add negative 3 and 8 together, that makes a 5. Again, if that confuses you, probably need to do some work on integers, positive and negative numbers, before we get into this. Um, but continuing along, so now I've covered those, and I can do my 4y and my negative 3y. Well, I can just treat that like 4y minus 3y. That's just going to be 1y. So positive 1y, or just plus y, either way you want to write it. And then finally, I'm just going to tack on anything that didn't have a like term exactly the way it was. Plus 2 minus 9x squared. Those are terms that had no like terms, so they just have to go on somewhere. And there are other ways I might organize this sentence. I could swap all this around. That's basically it. That's pretty much it. So here are some practice problems you can work on to kind of test your understanding of these concepts. Um, good luck.